Hello dear viewers, this is George from Ireland and in this video I'm continuing my series about the troubles in the six counties, that's Northern Ireland. So I left off in 1994, that summer, the IRA ceasefire, then in October the Loyalist terrorist organisations also declared a ceasefire. However, the IRA was still doing what people called house cleaning, as in severely beating up people suspected of petty crime uh, if they were in um, IRA dominated areas, the Loyalists likewise. Um, what else should I say? Um, and uh, whatever, killing people they thought were informers. Um, the IRA had a cover name, Direct Action Against Drugs, was they shot dead people they claimed were drug dealers. I think in some cases they really were, but it was still murder. The Republic of Ireland, Northern Ireland, we hadn't had the death penalty for decades before that. Even then the death penalty had only been for murder. And even then a person had to have a fair trial. And they weren't always sentenced to death for capital crimes. They weren't even always executed, even if sentenced. There was the right of appeal. So it was a, yet another sign of their brutality. Now, of course, there are some people who don't believe in fair trials and approved of this sort of vigilantism. Um, so uh, the um, Conservative government of uh, John Major, they'd lost lots of by-elections and they were dependent on support from the Ulster Unionists. So they felt they couldn't go too far in... Um, uh, making concessions to the Republican movement. They uh, released some terrorist uh, criminals early from prison. They did not release those on life sentences early. Thing is, in the UK, a life sentence almost never means a life sentence. Those who were sentenced to, li to life imprisonment for murder um, were often released after ridiculously short periods of time, just several years. So the Conservative and Unionist government said that the IRA must disarm before negotiations with the Sinn Féin could begin, because if you want peace, you don't need your weapons, so get rid of them. Um, otherwise, uh, you're clearly not committed, because it seemed that this could be some enormous ruse to get the government to reduce its uh, security measures, remove the sand guards along the border, whatever, and then begin the campaign of violence anew. Um, so it was also to bolster confidence in the Unionist community. The SDLP was delighted, their nationalists obviously delighted the IRA was uh, no longer going to be fermenting conflict. The Alliance Party welcomed it. The Unionists of most shades did not. The Reverend Martin Smith, as an Ulster Unionist MP, um, said we should be willing to talk to Sinn Féin and he was howled, howled down by other Unionists. And remember he'd been a uh, was it Grand uh, Master of the um, Imperial Lodge of Ireland, this is in the Orange Order. So very senior loyalist in that sense had said this. Um, anyway, so uh, some people say the trouble is the Tories are beholden to the Ulster Unionist Party. So many people were sceptical and ap apathetic about the peace process. I did not believe it was, would work. I couldn't imagine that the IRA would settle for trifling concessions. They want a 32 county republic and they want to dominate that and bring in state socialism and they won't settle for anything less than this. Uh, and, and even if they did, loyalist terrorists would continue their campaign and that would draw the IRA back into violence and so on. David Aronovich, he's a left-wing in, in English journalist, he said the IRA had obviously seen that their campaign was profitless, which is why they were wanting to do this. For some years, Sinn Féin has been elected to local councils uh, and local councils are met for cities and counties and Sinn Féin is there with Ulster Unionists and uh, Ulster Unionists knowing that Sinn Féin, well that's the IRA, were trying to kill them. Um, so it was very courageous of the Ulster Unionists to, uh, to work with these people who were conspiring to kill them. Now it's true some Sinn Féin party members were killed, not by the Ulster Unionist party, but uh, by loyalist terrorist outfits. So the severity of the troubles was often exaggerated by the 90s. Belfast's murder rate was um, a half that of London, um, a third of that by 94. Uh, and it was much lower than many American cities, for example. So there's some level of violence in, in every part of the world, and often that relates to religious or ethnic animosities, um, as well as just ordinary criminality. So Jim Molyneux, he was leader of the Alcinius party, and uh, he unburdened himself of this reflection that the IRA ceasefire is the worst thing that ever happened to us, because obviously the Unionists had been irate, because of the Republican campaign of violence, but they had been inside the United Kingdom. That hadn't been seriously watered down. And they thought that the UK government would make major concessions to nationalism because of this. Some things had happened which Unionists didn't like. A law being passed several years earlier saying that displays of flags, including the British flag, could be criminal in certain circumstances if it was thought particularly provocative. And many um, Unionist MPs had gone on a parade with the British flag in defiance of this. Um, the Unionist reason for not uh, uh, 
um, seriously engaging with nationalism was well, that would be bending the knee to terrorism. Well, that didn't hold water any longer. Um, anyway, uh, so the IRA obviously they continued beating people up with iron bars and things like that, mutilations for those they accused of criminality. The loyalists did that to a lesser extent, partly because the loyalists were not opposed to the RUC, even though the RUC was putting them in prison. Um, the economic boom was going on in the Republic of Ireland. This turbocharged economic growth was partly due to 20 year, years of EU subsidies. And by the way, the European Union had been created by this stage. It wasn't just the e European economic community. Um, the fertility rate in the Irish Republic had fallen considerably, which also helped our economy grow. And uh, the Catholic Church was no longer so exalted as it once had been. Well, Albert Reynolds, um, the Taoiseach, he was about to fall because he was trying to protect Father Brendan Smith, a priest from Belfast. The Catholic Church had been aware of rumours from the late 40s of him molesting children. Now, there are all sorts of reasons why people would invent these stories these days. Munchausen syndrome, desire for fame, compensation, sympathy, all the rest of it. Not in the 40s, when priests were on a pedestal, and anyone who breathed a bad word about the priest was going to be furiously uh, denounced. But, um, you know, church funds have been paid as hush money and things like that. But anyway, finally, Father Smith was extradited to Northern Ireland to face trial. He was actually eventually in prison in the Republic of Ireland, where he died of a heart attack in, in 1997. That reminds me also of, of Eamon Casey, the Bishop of Kerry, was involved in another scandal. Nothing to do with the children, but it was um, um, having, a, having a child um, when obviously he was supposed to be celibate and uh, misappropriating church funds to pay his former lover to keep quiet. But anyway, back to the conflict. Um, so the UDA and the UVF, astonishingly, um, demanded proper engagement with uh, Sinn Féin and making real concessions. Uh, this was a volte face, because they had been dead against the mildest concessions to uh, nationalist opinion way back in the 60s. Um, anyway, so uh, the DUP was against any engagement with Sinn Féin. The UUP sounded deeply sceptical, demanded total disarmament first. One of the ministers of the Northern Ireland office was Michael Ancrum. He is really um, Lord Ancrum, but anyway. And he said um, he invented a term called decommissioning because the IRA felt that disarming was humiliating. People normally hand over weapons in token of surrender. So he came up with this um, value neutral term. Um, other things to help the situation. Uh, then in 94, John Bruton of Fine Gael became Taoiseach. And um, he was a man who traced himself to the Home Rule Party and not to Sinn Féin in his ideological lineage. And he had the Prince of Wales come to the Republic of Ireland. The first time a Prince of Wales had been to uh, the south of Ireland for, my goodness, about 80 years. So Prince Charles came to Dublin and uh, many people said he was very welcome. Sinn Féin launched a protest, but it didn't uh, garner much support. So the summer of 95, um, there was a leadership contest on in the Ulster Unionist Party. John Taylor and David Trimble were amongst the front runners. And it was the Garvahi Road dispute, and they both had to be seen to be staunch on that one. That was the cardinal virtue for us Unionists. Uh, Trimble won in the end. He'd only been an MP for, I think it was only three years, representing Upper Ban. Um, this law lecturer, well, he was an Orangeman, of course, and um, uh, he was there at Garvahi Road speaking about why they ought to be through. He'd been in vanguard in the 70s and even talked about seceding from the United Kingdom, saying that Great Britain is so, so eager to be shot of us, they would pay us to go. And then Northern Ireland would really be able to take the gloves off and uh, eliminate Republican terrorists and Loyalist terrorists too. Another thing that happened is Sir James Kilfeder died, who was the MP for North Down. So he'd founded his own party, Ulster Popular Unionist Party, it's a one-man band really, and his seat was won by Robert McCartney, of the UK Unionist Party. It's the most independent-minded constituency in Northern Ireland. These days, Lady Sylvia Herman represents it. So um, anyway, uh, although he's very broad-minded in some respects, uh, McCartney said absolutely no discussions with Sinn Féin. We believe in democracy. They're out to destroy but democracy. That's it. And um, he uh, was keen to point out he had Catholic friends and cousins, and uh, he had indeed a Catholic man elected to represent his party. Connor Cruz O'Brien, former Irish cabinet minister, as in the south of Ireland. Um, so um, Sinn Féin was stalling on this, much of the IRA was unwilling to uh, compromise, and, and some people in the IRA were against uh, the ceasefire altogether. So it was um, quite a feat to get the ceasefire to hold, no attacks on the Crown forces, and in South Ireland people were very jittery, felt this was feeble, that, that, that uh, ceasefires in the 70s 
had enfeebled the Republican cause. Um, so the DUP was fulminating that the government would contemplate parleying with Sinn Féin under any circumstances. So um, anyway, uh, the Garvahi Road dispute in um, 1995, the Orangemen were allowed through. There was the um, Garvahi Road Residents uh, Association, which had protested against it. And McKenneth was the head of that. He was an IRA man, been in prison for burning down a Royal British Legion hall, hall. The Royal British Legion is a veterans association for former members of the British Armed Forces. And of course, the IRA liked to target that. So it was highly controversial. There was a split in the UVF over the ceasefire, but I'll talk about that next time.